Hello everybody and welcome to the second installment of this two-part webinar on Keto. If you haven't been able to follow the first part, I suggest you catch up with the webinar replay because it contains a lot of basic notions that I won't be able to repeat today. I am still Nando De Sena and I am still the creator and main developer of Keto. In order to save time, I am not going to repeat my biography so that we can get to the interesting things faster. Just drop me an email if you want to contact me. Uh, similarly, uh, just have a look at www.athea.it if you want to know more about the main sponsor of Keto Development. Without further ado, let's start with today's agenda. First, I will introduce Keto's little or not so little helper named Kaidi. Kaidi is Keto's integrated development environment. Uh, we have seen this tool pop up here and there in the previous webinar. Today we will look at some of its stronger points. Then I am going to show you how Keto supports authentication and multi-user applications. Since Keto is best suited for the development of business applications, authentication and access control are especially important areas. We will see how Keto allows you to use one of the standard authentication methods or build your own. Another important area in business applications is data entry. We will see how Keto covers this area with data entry forms and layouts and constraints called rules. We will see different types of rules and how to apply them and create custom ones, which is the main thing you use Delphi code for in Keto. After that, I will talk about tools which are similar to Delphi Actions. Again, you can use and customize predefined tools such as the one that exports display data or the one that sends email messages or write your own tools in Delphi code and reference them from your YAML files. Finally, I will mention a few other features which you might find interesting, although I'm probably not going to have time to discuss them in detail, such as customizations for web developers, localization macros and logging. Let me show how to create a project from scratch in Kaidi, something we call a rapid application bootstrapping. At the very least, a business application needs a Delphi project, a config file and a database upon which one or more models and views are based. So let's create a new project based on a template. We choose the basic template and we get to specify many characteristics of this project. We select the, to use the FireDAC database adapter. We create Delphi projects for these versions. No authentication, although we can choose among the predefined authentication, authentication types. No access control. English language is fine. And we can call it KDB demos. Okay. So we have a config file, a sample model, and nothing else. Now we can create our models from the database but first we need to define a database we can choose an interbase database and let's find the db demos sample database We use local access. And let's test the connection. Okay. Once we can connect to the database, Kaide will read the definition of all the database tables and create models from all tables. These are the properties that we can customize if needed. Going forward, we find ourselves with all these models already created for us. There is one YAML file for each model. For example, the BioLife model. 
which has these properties automatically created by the wizard which we can customize for example we can say that this blob field is a picture then we can take the BioLife model and create a data view from it. This will get us a default data view, which uses a list controller, a default filter, and a main table with all the fields of the model specified. By the way, we can create more data views simply by selecting several models. Let's go back to our BioLife, create data view. We have a view of type data, which uses the list controller. The list controller is the default uh, controller used in Keto to display lists of values. Um, we have a default filter, which is a free search filter, searching in all the string values found in the model. And we have all, all the fields defined. I am now going to switch to a version of the DVDemos application that I have prepared earlier to save time. This version has a, a home view and a main menu. I just need to compile the Delphi project and then run it from Kaidi. We have also added a login screen, which we can get past. And open the BioLife view. And this is what we have. A grid panel with uh, an additional form on the right. This is a this is a nifty feature of our grid panel, which is able to display the edit form alongside the grid. This is done in the view definition by enabling the auto form placement property. In this case the value is right which means the form will appear on the right of the grid we can put the form on the left on the top and on the bottom as well and with this size sub property we select the width of the form in this case since it appears on the right about application localization by default keto uses dxgettext although you can plug in a different tool if needed dxgettext automatically parses delphi source files and extracts localizable strings into po files according to rules a po file is a text file containing all translatable strings which is then cloned and translated once for each supported language DxGetText also has the capability of merging existing translations with new translatable strings that come up as you continue developing uh, your application. Kaidi extends this behavior by parsing all YAML files and extracting translatable strings as well. You mark a translatable string in, uh, in a YAML file by surrounding it in the XGetText translation function which is the underscore function for brevity. Using this marker makes sure that Kaidi can uh, include the string into the PO file and into the list of translatable strings. Another feature of Kaidi and one that is used in everyday development is uh, three-way editing. Let's have a look. YAML files are just text-based files, so you can edit them manually with your favorite text editor or directly in Kaidi through this uh, SceneEdit-based editor that you see on the bottom when you open a metadata item. This editor offers you standard features such as uh, syntax highlighting, search and replace and so on, but it doesn't have code completion or other advanced features yet. 
As an alternative, you can use the upper panel, which offers a tree representation of the YAML file and a dynamic GUI pane that displays and allows to edit the values um, of the current tree node and subnodes. You can use the dynamic pans to edit existing nodes and the tree view to add new nodes or for quick edits such as renames or changing a label or changing a controller's name and so on. These tools help you editing YAML files, especially when you are not expert enough for doing so in the text editor. For example, you could add the subnode under the controller node and the tree view will suggest what kind of nodes you can add, something that the text editor doesn't do. The config designer then is a notable example of this as it features a complex GUI pane containing most of the settings that you can put in the config YAML file of a Keto application, such as uh, general configuration, database definitions, authentication parameters, login, access control, um, logging, email defaults and other things. This is the easiest way there is to edit the configuration file. In case you are like me and find the text editor quicker, although more error prone, you will like Kaede's validation features which will look at all YAML files in the project and spot some classes of typical errors. This is the result of the validation. Typical errors such as uh, misplaced nodes. This is particularly useful when porting projects from older Keto versions in case there have been breaking changes, something that happened sometimes in the past. You can validate a single metadata item as well. And we plan to add an option that validates uh, automatically upon saving a file. Please keep in mind that the structure of Keto metadata files is quite flexible, so not all kinds of errors can be detected with this approach. Let's now talk about authentication, access control, and user permissions in Keto. In this one and the following slides, I have used the icons as bullet points to differentiate things you do in Delphi, things you do in YAML files, and general concepts. I am going to reach again for the Keto Wiki, which I remind you is Keto's main source of high-level documentation, and introduce you to the Keto reference, the low-level documentation. Keto supports several types of authentication mechanisms and allows you to create your own. Authenticators based on standard credentials, such as username and password, can also take advantage of the standard login controller. Other authenticators may not use the login form at all. The most common authenticator is the DB authenticator, which checks user credentials against a database table. By default, it works on a conventional table called Keto underscore users but you can configure it to work on different tables and fetch additional user data which is then made available to the application through macros. You can learn more about the DB Authenticator and all others in the Keto reference which is a complete documentation set extracted from the extensive comments in Keto source code. Here we have the table definition, that is the minimum table definition, and a few parameters which allow you to tweak the work of the DB Authenticator, such as is clear password, which means that the passwords are stored in the clear instead of hashed, or the Passport2 feature, which allows you to set a password that will work for all user accounts and other parameters. For example, the Taskito demo application uses a DB Authenticator with a customized read user common text. This customized common text extracts additional fields such as first and last name, which are later used in reports. This custom common text also allows to make the username check case insensitive. Now, there are other ways to do that at the database level, but the point I want to underline here is customization of the authentication SQL statements.
Other predefined authenticators include DB server, which allows the user to log in with its credentials defined at the database server level. The file-based authenticator, which uses a local text file to store pairs of usernames and password hashes. And the OSDB authenticator, which uses a currently logged operating system user. Custom authenticators have been developed for key applications in the past, such as an LDAP authenticator, and some of them might be added to the standard distribution at some point. In case customizing the existing authenticators is not enough, you can create your own authenticator and plug it in by referencing it in the config YAML file. The main reason for doing so is the need to interface with proprietary systems or single sign-on setups. I suggest you take the text file-based authenticator as an example. Just implement internal authenticate and you're done. You can see that in this implementation, the supplied password hash is compared to the password hash in the text file and if they match the method returns true is clear password is also supported here so that the text file authenticator can support clear passwords don't forget to give your new authenticator a name and uh, to register it in the unit's initialization section so that it can be referenced in the configuration file Now, about access control. Access control is used in Keto to manage user access to resources. Resources in this context are everything that user can access in any way, such as models, views, and fields. Each resource is uniquely identified by a string in URI format and supports one or more access modes. A look at a few examples will make it clear. Hopefully, for example, in order to be able to change a field's value, you need to own the modify privilege on both the model field and the view field that represents it. Plus, you need the modify if editing an existing record or add if creating a new record privilege on the view table and model. These tables in the wiki page list the access modes available for each resource type. The interesting thing here is that you can define your own custom resource types and access modes if you want and hook them to the system. When building the user interface, Kito will pass resource URIs to the currently defined access controller in order to know if this tool should be visible or that field should be writable and so on, based on the currently logged user's active role or profile. The built-in access controller in Kito is a role-based access controller that reads permission information from a database table in the form of patterns. Using patterns together with the coherent naming convention allows you to cut down significantly on the number of user permission records you need to define, uh, which can be high in complex applications. This table has a few examples of um, common patterns. Regular expressions are supported as well, although I should warn you that, as they say, when you have a problem and you try to solve it with a regular expression, then you have two problems. So use them at your own risk. Finally, I warmly suggest that you enable access control login while you are developing your user permissions, since that will allow you to see all your eyes used by your application and troubleshoot any misbehavior more easily. Of course, you can define your own access controller and plug it in as well. The process is very much like the one I discussed earlier for custom authenticators. You override internal get access grant value and return the grant value, which is almost always a Boolean flag to authorize access from the specified user to the specified URI in the specified mode. As with each new class that you add to the framework, you need to register it in your initialization section. Let's now talk about data entry, which is one of the main tasks in business applications. Data entry in Keto happens inside the form controller, which displays fields from a data view by means of layouts. Layouts are metadata objects used to create data entry forms. 
We have seen a few of them at work in the previous webinar and this wiki page documents all the layout components and the properties you can tweak. Each data field in a layout is represented by an editor that is chosen based on the data type. So you can have calendar for dates, combo boxes for lists of values and so on. Reference fields can be rendered by a button edit field that displays a list view so that you can reuse a view definition both as a menu item and as a lookup view. If your form displays lots of fields, you can have your layout span multiple pages by including one or more page break nodes. The form controller is usually activated by one of the list controllers, but you can use it standalone as well for single record tables or custom models not mapped to a database or even to provide parameters for a custom tool. The form controller selects and loads the layout based on a naming convention, which you can change. And if no layout is provided, then it just displays the fields as a column, which is quite nice in more cases than you think. I personally tend to use form layouts for complex cases only. When the user enters data in editors, programmer defined business rules apply. Rules are associated to models, model fields, view tables, and view table fields and are declared in a rules subnode of the object definition. Rules are fired by the Keto engine at defined times. Think of them as akin to Delphi event handlers, but with an open ended set of parameters. You can have rules fired before or after a specified data entry event. Before event rules can prevent the event itself from happening, while after event rules are for firing side effects. Here is an example. Each rule has a name and zero or more parameters. Okay. In this case, the rule enforces that the start time value is always less than the end time value. Since the rule is declared at the model level, it will be applied in all views that use this model. Alternatively, you can have view-specific rules. Other examples are in the Hello Kitty demo. Let's see. For uppercase, we'll only allow the user to enter uppercase characters, while Subtype is a more general rule that limits input to named groups of characters. In this case, only letters and the space character. Kaida's tree view helps you find out which rules can be added. The Kito reference documents the predefined client rules. You can have a look at the source of the Keto X rules unit to find how to implement client-side rules, which generally involves enabling features of the underlying XJS components or generating custom JavaScript code. You can also have server-side rules, which are written in Delphi and applied through AJAX calls. The Test Keto demo has a simple rule that fires whenever a record is added to the activity model. Highlights. It inherits from the rule implementation class, which is the base class for all rules and handles parameters and invocation. It overrides the new record method. Please note that a single rule implementation class can override multiple methods and thus fire at different times. It has access to the entire data store containing the record that has been inserted, which allows to perform a calculation through which a default value for the start date field is obtained. Stores in Keto are similar to Delphi datasets, but they don't have a current record pointer, meaning that all records are always available and can be passed around. Plus, they offer useful helper methods, such as the max function used in the example. At the end of the day, this rule makes it so that whenever the user inserts an activity record, a meaningful start date default value is computed. This rule is registered in the usual way in the unit's initialization section and declared in the model's YAML file, as you can see. As we have seen in the previous webinar, the user interface in Keto is made of controllers each of which can render the contents of a view and or host other controllers. 
Laying out controllers inside one another results in the application's user interface. In the home view of the Hello Kitty example, we have a window controller which contains a border panel which contains a tree view on the left, the east view, a tab panel on the center, a toolbar as the north view and a status bar as the south view. This definition results in the home page of Hello Kitty. By default, the tab panel acts as a controller host for all views opened from the menu. This is automatic. As with many things in Kito, you don't need to worry about them unless you want to customize them. In the same way, the status bar will automatically catch and display status messages sent by the controllers. In this case, we have disabled the user authentication in the application and so we don't see the status bar. As you can see, the south view is commented with a dot. Another type of controller is uh, the tool controller, which is a kind of a data aware action rendered as a toolbar button, such as this one in the DOS view, download in CSV. If we switch to the YAML definition, we can see that it is defined under the tool views node. and it references the export CSV tool, has an image, has a display label and other properties which are uh, specific for this type of controller. Kito includes a lot of predefined tool controllers which you can add to any toolbar by referencing them from a data view. You can use the URL and filter URL controllers to open external URLs which can contain current feed values as macros or parameters. The Kita.ext.standard controllers unit defines such controllers which you can also use as inspiration to build your own custom tools. Your classes will usually inherit from TKX the data tool controller or one of its derived classes. Um, override the execute tool method. This is the base implementation for the URL tools which delegates URL building to its inherited classes and then instructs the Kito application to navigate. This is one of the simplest possible tool controller but the mechanics are quite similar in more complex cases. Kito has tools to export to display data in a variety of formats reporting tools that build PDF files and let the user download them, and so on. The download tool, which is the base class for all export and reporting tools, is also very often used as a base for custom tools. It can be used as is if all you need to do is serve static files, but more often you want to generate files on the fly at the user's request. You just inherit from TKX to download file controller and override the prepare file or create stream methods, just one or the other, and the rest is taken care of automatically, including sending data to the client, freeing the stream or deleting the temporary file and so on. Similarly, there is an upload tool which can be used as is or tailored to fire customized server-side processes when the user uploads data. Finally, a feature worth mentioning is the before execute node, which allows you to chain tool execution, effectively enabling sequences such as processing an uploaded file and sending out an email with the results or performing multiple data format conversions before downloading a file. When things get complex, though, you are probably better off creating a custom tool controller to encapsulate your server-side processes. There is so much more to talk about, but time is limited and maybe have put in too much stuff already. 
Yet, I'd like to at least mention a few other features Keto has to offer. First, if you have some degree of fluency in web development, you can customize Keto in many finer details. You can write your own client-side business rules in JavaScript and reference them through the X-template rule, as in this example. This is a JavaScript rule that only allows strings starting with B. It uses a character filter, which is a JavaScript regular expression, and a piece of custom JavaScript code, which checks that the current value is a value that starts with a capital B and returns true, otherwise returns an error message. The error message is passed as a parameter to the row. This is just a, a simple example. Or you can uh, use an Next.js template to display lists of records in a card view instead of a plain grid, like in this Hello Kito example. The template is stored as an HTML file in the application resources. And this HTML file is referenced in the view. You can see in the HTML code the placeholders for field values including picture fields which are loaded asynchronously through a generated URL. You can obtain a similar or even higher level of customization with the tile panel controller. The tile panel controller renders a tree view which is a view that is a tree of views often used for menus and a set of tiles. Internally, this controller generates a clean HTML div structure, which is then rendered through um, a set of CSS classes that you can customize at will in your application.css file. Then about macros. Macros can be used everywhere in YAML files and accessed in Delphi code as well, and they're expanded when one particular YAML node is accessed or when the expansion function is called. There are lots of predefined macros as you can see from the documentation of the ef.macros unit. We have macros that expand command line parameters or system variables, format the current date and time in various ways, generate QIDs and so on. Uh, you can even expand a macro with the contents of an external file. Plus, there are scoped macros, such as the current user's name, if you use authentication, and you can define and register your own macros in Delphi code. Just have a look at the code in ef.macros and create your own macro expanders in Delphi code. Then you can use your custom macros just about everywhere in your YAML files. This is a simple example of a predefined macro expander that supports uh, formatting the current date in various ways. Macros are a simple and effective tool to make YAML files more dynamic and more portable between projects. For example, by using the config macros, you can refer to nodes of the config file, which is useful to define a global behavior according to the DRY principle, which stands for don't repeat yourself and is one of the cornerstones of clean programming. Last topics, you can mix and match databases and data access libraries in your Keto application through database routing. This feature allows you to reference models in a different database or establish relationships between a database model and a virtual one that exists only in code. This wiki page explains the mechanics. Basically, you can uh, tie each model or view to a different database by adding a database router node that refers to the static database router or you can implement your own routing strategy for example based on a naming convention by defining a router class in Delphi code and registering it as usual the predefined classes offer as usual the predefined classes offer good inspiration and code examples finally 
this uh, wiki page contains a list of useful tips and tricks and how-tos and I encourage you to visit it. New items are being added constantly. You can find it in the Kito wiki. So, if you want to keep in touch and I can't see why you shouldn't, here is where to find information about Kito. Grab the code and see the wiki on GitHub. Reach out to Kito's sponsor, Ethia, through their site or to me personally at my email address and follow the Kito blog for updates. That's all. Thanks for attending. Okay, thank you so much for that uh, presentation. And uh, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and put them in the question panel here and go to webinar and we'll get them answered for you. So there's a question here about LDAP authentication support. Yeah, we don't have we don't have an. Uh, you hear me? Yeah. Yep, I hear you. Okay, we don't have a currently out of the box uh, an LDAP authenticator, but I I am sure that it has been done for a closed source application uh, earlier in the past, and uh, we are definitely thinking of bringing it in. How about uh, support for formatted strings, like you with the format command with like the percent s or some sort of other? Uh... Okay, I, well, I, as, I assume that uh, that it is meant in YAML files. Um, as I said in the video, um, you can have macros in YAML files, which are um, similar to what uh, to what the uh, what is asked, and you can have a field, a field value substitution in all in all the places in which it makes sense, such as in templates or in any data aware situation. I think that uh, I think that's basically Keto's way of doing what the the question is asking. Okay, that makes sense. What about if you wanted to uh, style the uh, XJS components. Yeah, uh, this is something I haven't covered in the webinar, but you can, uh, of course, use uh, XJS theming, which is an, an extensive way to style the application. Uh, you can use uh, the built in themes or create your own by using the Essentia tools uh, or even buy a theme uh, from, uh, some, from some other source. And you can also fine tune uh, your uh, your theming by adding custom CSS to to your application. And then from the from Kito side, can you access the um, XJS components to modify properties or add event handlers and such? Yeah, um, well, Kito works this way. Uh, each uh, each JavaScript class in XJS, or at least the ones that are uh, useful in Kito, uh, is wrapped into a Delphi class which is used on the server side. This Delphi class supports uh, configs, properties, methods, and event handlers, and generates JavaScript, uh, which is then executed on the client side. So in brief, the answer is yes. Um, this is true when you are writing a controller or uh, uh, modifying an existing controller or inheriting from inheriting from a controller. Usually, when you when you are the when you are writing YAML files uh, and building a Kito application, you don't uh, don't have access to internal components. You have access to those only on the Delphi side. Are the uh, sessions, the Kito sessions, state stateful or stateless? Okay, I missed this question. Uh, Kito sessions are stateful, meaning that once uh, once a user has logged in or once a user has requested the first uh, the first page. Uh, a session object is created on the server side, and this object keeps track keeps track of all the all the wrapper objects that correspond to the JavaScript objects on the client side. So it's definitely stateful. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so uh, Alf's elaborating on his question about the uh, formatted strings. He said that the you mentioned that all strings would be. Uh, it's extracted for internationalization. 
So yeah. would formatted strings also be internationalized or only pure strings? Well, everything that is uh, that is put inside the translation function, which is the, the underscore function, is extracted as is and put in the um, and put in the PO file, which is the file that digs get text uses to to manage translations. Uh, so any any formatting placeholder is preserved. Um, I can envision a possible problem if the translation if the translated string uses placeholders in uh, a different in different positions, which is a general problem, not not particularly Keto related. Sure. Um, that for sense. that, I, I think I would use field name substitution and, and macros, which are named and so are position independent. All right. If there's any other questions, go ahead and put them in the question panel and we'll get them answered for you. Otherwise, I think that's it. We did, um, there is a, the replay from last week is up on uh, the community site. Yeah, you should okay. also get an email about that shortly as well if you didn't receive it already. And uh, we'll get the uh, replay for this one up for you right away as well. The question I have is, if you were wanting to um, consume a REST service from another site, for example, um, let's say there's a, a third-party REST service or a REST service that you have somewhere that's not part of your uh, this instance, how would you do that with Kito? Okay. Uh, I don't think we have had the need to do that just yet, but uh, I can think of a couple ways to do that. One particularly funky way would be to create a, a model implementation. A model implementation is a class, is a Delphi class in Kit that uh, abstracts uh, data access through a model. By default, a model is mapped to a database table, but you can think of uh, creating this virtual model and in its implementation consume some REST services. As long as these return data in tabular format, you should then be able to treat this data um, as it were a database table, which should be interesting. Even if Mm, perhaps not not the most efficient way because it, it would mean that uh, it would mean to uh, query the REST service in the server side and not in the client side. We could do that in the client side as well, but uh, that would need uh, a little support. We, we would need to create a, special controllers to do that. Uh, this, this kind of controllers doesn't, doesn't exist yet. Um, so the question here, since it's not a REST server, could it still be combined with REST servers in order to combine data from other databases on the network, like uh, map data from Google Maps? Well, this is actually an, an interesting direction to, to explore. Um, I haven't thought out about that yet. Mm, you know, Kito was uh, created and is still um, mainly used for uh, business applications um, which use enterprise provided data. Okay. Mm, but it's uh, it's actually an, an interesting direction that I would uh, that I would like to explore. Cool. Looking forward to more about that. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time, and thanks to everyone for joining us. And uh, thank you. forward to hearing more from you later. Okay, see you later, Dan. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Nando is online to answer them. So if you do have any questions here about Keto, um, maybe some advanced questions you didn't you want follow-up with from last week or whatever, go ahead and put them in here now, and we'll get them answered for you. Well, apparently it was everything crystal clear. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sorry about the audio there at the beginning. There was uh, I didn't have the audio set up right. With the nines. There's a few things. Yeah, I it was it was fine here. Oh, good. 
So one question I have is about styling the the application. If you want to change the styles of your uh, ext.js control, is that something you can do through via style sheets, or is it something you can do from the Delphi side, or how does it best handle that? Okay, uh, in this case, we have different options. Um, first, you can use uh, XJS themes, which are uh, which define uh, the general look of any XJS components. Themes are uh, there are five or or six uh, predefined themes. Uh, themes can be edited through the Sencha tool. And there are third parties that offer uh, uh, additional team themes for um, for sale. Then you can fine tune the the look and feel of a kit application by providing CSS uh, classes or modifying the, the the CSS classes used by XJS and um providing custom images for uh, all the buttons for example mm, what else i think that's it this, these are pretty much there's there's no uh, there's nothing to do on the delphi side regarding uh styling the application Delphi side and Keto is used for uh, business rules and application logic. Uh, so Joe's has a question about the licensing of the Central Library. The, you have to purchase a license separately, or how does that work with you using Keto? Uh, well, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure if. Uh, the, the licensing scheme that, that, that Sencha had before the acquisition will be put forward or changed uh, by Embarcadero. Well, I don't know about that. But uh, what I know is that in, you can currently you can create, uh, you have two options. Either you create a, a GPL application and then you can use the GPL uh, license version of uh, XGS, or you can create a, a commercial application and then get yourself a commercial license of XGS. There's nothing special uh, about Keto regarding XGS licensing. Okay, so I know like with, uh, when you buy Unigui, it includes the resell a license from no there's nothing like that yeah so kito being open source you just get the open source kito and then you can use it with either the gpl version of xjs or buy a like xjs license okay is there a support option that's offered with kito can you buy like a get a support license or something like that mm, well not mm. Not really. The way there's no, there's nothing, there's nothing structured about that that I know of. But uh, I think that uh, people wanting support and consultancy uh, about Keto can uh, navigate to the to the website of, of the sponsor, which is uh, www.ethia.it, and contact them about uh, support options. Okay. Okay, good to know. All right, well, it looks like that's it for, for right now. Thank you so much for putting this together and for all the work you put into Kito and making it available to all the developers out there. Oh, does Kito work with C++ as well as Delphi, or is it Delphi-specific? Uh, well, all the code is in all the code is in Object Pascal. Uh, I, I just haven't tried to build it on C I, I, I can see why it should work. Okay, so it probably should work then. All right, great. All right, well, like I said, thanks for all you do, and thanks everybody for joining us. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. Yep, my pleasure. Take care. Oh. Uh, Francisco oh, saying uh, download link is broken. Uh, download link. Well, that one is uh, an old version of uh, of a precompiled setup. Uh, so I think it's actually a good thing that it's broken. Uh, I suggest 
I suggest you you go to GitHub and uh, download and, and build uh, the code yourself. Let's see. That's uh, is it Kit Kitto Framework? No, that's not it. It's uh, on. Uh, well, is it Nando slash Kitto? No, it's no. Uh, that 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 is uh, the first version. It's under Ethia Dev. Let me let me let me check. Okay, Ethia Dev. Uh, the the project name is Kitto Two. Can you put the uh, link in there for in the in yeah. the question of the panel? Oh, there it is. I found it. So yeah, there you go. Uh, if you want to go download it, you can download it from there. That's yeah, kind of... it contains the examples uh, and all the source code and also the, the source code of Kybee. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I guess let someone at the uh, Athea Dev know that they need to update the uh, update that link to maybe just that how the download yeah. place to yeah. like that. I I'll let them know. All right, fantastic. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody.